Welcome to an example of finding a determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix using the cofactor method. Before we start, let's go over some vocabulary. First, the minor of any element is a determinant form by deleting the row and column of that specific element. So for example, if we consider the element in row one, column two, or this element here, it's minor, or m sub one comma two, for row one, column two, is equal to the determinant formed by deleting the row and column of this element. So if we eliminate row one and column two, notice how it leaves four elements. So the two by two determinant would have elements D, F, G, I. Next, the cofactor for any element using capital C is equal to negative one raised to the power of I plus J where I is the row of the element and J is the column of the element times its minor. So if we wanted the cofactor of element B, which is in row one, column two, we would have C sub one comma two is equal to negative one raised to the power of one plus two, which would be to the third power, times its minor, which is M sub one comma two. Now that we know what the minor and cofactor are, we can use the cofactor method to find the determinant of a three by three matrix. To calculate the determinant of a three by three matrix, we multiply each element in any row or column by its cofactor. The sum of these products is equal to the determinant. So going back to our example, the first step is to determine which row or column we want to use to find our determinant. And because none of the elements are zero, it really doesn't matter so let's go ahead and work our way across this first row using the cofactor method. So the determinant of matrix A is going to be equal to the first element in row one, which is three, times negative one raised to the power of the sum of the row and column of this element. Well, this element is in row one, column one. One plus one is equal to two. We're going to multiply this by the two by two determinant formed by eliminating the row and column of the element three. So if we eliminate row one and column one, notice how we're left with these four elements here for our two by two determinant. So we have negative two, five, four, one. And now we're gonna to move to the next element in row one. So we'll have plus, the next element is positive one times negative one raised to the power of the row plus the column of this element. Well, this element is in row one, column two. One plus two is equal to three. We're gonna multiply this by the two by two determinant formed by eliminating the row and column of this element one. So we're gonna eliminate row one again, but, but now eliminate column two, leaving us with the elements negative one, five, two, one. plus the last element in this row is positive two. We're gonna multiply this by negative one raised to the power of the row plus the column of this element. Well, the element two is in row one, column three. One plus three is equal to four. And we're gonna multiply this by the two by two determinant formed by eliminating the row and column of this element. Well, this element two is in row one, column three leaving us with the two by two determinant with elements negative one, negative two, two, four. And now we'll simplify. Well, negative one squared is gonna be positive one. Positive one times three is three. Now to evaluate this two by two determinant, we would have negative two times one minus five times four. Well, negative two times one is negative two. Minus 20 would be negative 22. 
looking at the next product, we have negative one to the third. That's negative one times one, so that's plus negative one or just minus one times our two by two determinant, which again would be negative one times one minus five times two. Well, negative one times one is negative one, minus ten would be negative eleven. Next we have negative one to the fourth, that's positive one times two, so we'll have plus two times the value of our determinant, which would be negative one times four minus ne negative two times two. Well, negative one times four is negative four, and then minus negative two times positive two, that's minus negative four plus four, negative four plus four would be zero. So we have negative sixty-six plus eleven plus zero, this is equal to negative fifty-five. So the determinant of matrix A is equal to negative fifty-five. Remember we can also represent a determinant using vertical bars. So using the nine elements of the original matrix, we can also say the determinant in this form equals negative fifty-five. Okay, we'll take a look at a second example in the next video. I hope you found this helpful.